It was built for strength. They probably had no idea what this thing would live through. Honestly, I think of it as a time machine. The fact that it still exists, and still works, amazing. Grand Central Terminal, one of the busiest transportation hubs in the world. Every day, 750,000 commuters, visitors, and tourists use this terminal. Millions of people have walked these floors. And yet, only a select few know what goes on 10 stories below this iconic structure. This is a very special and a very secret place. This 22,000 square foot cavern was built in 1913. It's home to nine 15 ton AC to DC electric converters that powered New York Central passenger and freight trains for the Northeastern United States. Thousands of track miles were powered from this underground facility. And above it all, is this whiting crane that helped power the entire rail system on the Northeast Corridor since the 1920s. And it has seen a lot of history. As the U.S. was entering World War II, this facility was manned by Army snipers. The rail lines powered from here were critical to the war effort, a strategic fact recognized by Adolf Hitler who was informed of the facility's existence by a German spy. In 1942, he sent several saboteurs to our shores aboard German U-boats. Their mission? Infiltrate this facility and simply throw handfuls of sand into these gigantic rotary converters. This simple act would have destroyed the converters and brought 80% of military rail traffic to a standstill. Thankfully, the plot was foiled, but even if it had succeeded, this whiting crane would have provided the muscle to rebuild and to power this railroad. Following World War II, the crane played an important role in key upgrades, including the removal of old converters and in placement of new rectifiers, feeders, transformers, and generators in the early 1990s. It's also replaced burnt out transformers with such speed and efficiency that not one of 700 trains a day were delayed for one New York minute. I don't think the engineers who designed this crane would realize its significance to this railroad, to this nation in both peace and war for nearly 100 years. These early designers in the crane industry, they were the true pioneers in custom-built overhead cranes. They knew what they were doing. Looking at this blueprint, I can see that this crane was custom-built for the New York Central Railroad. You know, it may surprise a lot of people to find a whiting crane that's still running strong after almost 100 years. But not me. That's what those cranes were designed for. That's what Whiting Corporation still represents today. Custom-built cranes, made in America, that literally lasts a lifetime. Those old rail lines in the Northeast, they were supported by Whiting overhead cranes and rail car lifts. Today, our custom cranes and rail car lifts are literally everywhere. We like to say that we lift American industry from the ground and from the air. In the 1900s, these cranes were hand-built by the highly skilled engineers and craftsmen of that day. 
and it's really no different at today's Whiting Corporation. We have in-house engineering and in-house manufacturing right here in the United States. Whiting Corporation builds rail car lifts and custom cranes for power plants, automotive factories, metro transportation hubs, NASA. The technology has evolved, but the reliability and strength are still hallmarks of the brand. 85 years for a Whiting crane? Well, she's just getting started. <laughs>